If you have a process, it puts you in the driver's seat with a clear checklist. It de demystifies the process. It gives you control. It saves you headache and heartache. And you know that you're, you're investing for the right reasons. Welcome to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Show. Whether you are an active or passive investor, we'll teach you how to scale your real estate investing business into something big. This is part two of a series with Colm McEvely, if you want to pronounce his last name correctly. For those of you that don't know, Colm has gone from an engineer to an investor advocate, and his journey has gone from serving himself to want to serve a community. Part two of this, I'm excited to have you back on the show here today. Colm, how's it going? It's going fantastic. We're going to dive into this quickly, and uh, we're going to have in the show notes a place for you to reach out to me if you want to dive into your own personal investing journey to talk about the process we're going to go through. Um, why don't you let me share my screen for those that are able to see what we're looking at? And uh, so share screen. Yep, you what should be this? able to uh, to share that. Yeah, if you're watching this on YouTube, this would be a great one. If, or if you don't watch the show on YouTube, uh, this would be a good episode to go and actually see uh, see what Colm is sharing with us here today, because this is going to be great. So you see the screen, right? I do. Okay, so this is building off part one. Part one talked about investor biases. And so these are the three different uh, biases that investors have when they're going into every decision. We talked about that at length. If you haven't heard about it, go to the other podcast. If you want more information, I would recommend these books, Thinking in Bets, How to Decide. Uh, this is a professional poker player. She talked extensively about the decisions that we make and how everything's a gamble mm -hmm. and how when you're an investor, one of the things that you could do to provide a sense of momentum is decide what level of risk certain numbers and certain decisions are for you and then you can create a matrix and decide that way <clears throat> and the whole purpose is to have consistency with your investor making podcast uh, investor making uh, decisions um episode 245 on cash flow connections with hunter thompson is an episode where he in interviewed this poker player annie duke and when i heard that episode years ago this is probably two three years ago um we, I, I just thought, wow, this applies so much to the investors that I was serving at the time. And I noticed that when I talked to software engineers, that they had a real process that was tangible. But when I talked to investors that were more emotional, let's say, usually physicians are, are, are pretty, they're making a lot of uh, emotional decisions. They would go back and forth on the progress of their decision. And the result was that they never made a decision. So they were sitting on the sidelines. They weren't happy. They weren't getting anything done. And I had to come up with a tangible process for them to actually feel like they were in control of their decision-making process. And just recapping, if you have a process, it puts you in the driver's seat with a clear checklist. It de demystifies the process. It gives you control. It saves you headache and heartache. And you know that you're, you're investing for the right reasons. So this is the process that I teach my investors to go through. And there's four different key columns key quadrants think of it like a submarine and you need to and, and you need to fill up each level of the submarine each room of the submarine before you move to the next and the key thing i want to call out is notice that deal numbers is all the way at the end it's not at the beginning and so the, there's a couple of reasons for that one what if the investment strategy doesn't even work with what you're looking for the deal numbers don't matter what if the market has laws or developments or big, big, you know, uh, units nearby that doesn't align with what you think is best for your the use of your money. Then the deal numbers doesn't matter. And then what about the sponsor? What if the sponsor is unethical? You know, anybody could put fifteen percent IRR in the the Excel spreadsheet cell box. Is that is that actually an, a conservative number? Are you looking at the actual rent escalations is that matching the market information so just know that deal numbers are at the end you need to vet the sponsor then you need to, to look at the msa in the area and then you need to look at the investments and eventually you know like i trust sam i've invested with sam before i i trust him as a sponsor so i don't need to to do this so so what i'm saying is that you know this decision making process is going to be a little bit shorter in the future. I will still look at the MSA in the area and the investment and the deal numbers because that might be something particular to my needs at the time. Maybe the liquidity timing of the deal is, is really important to me. So I need to look at this third stage, which is the investment stage. Right. So, but, but just driving into this, 
And, and again, you could reach out to me. We could set up a call. There'll be there'll be my contact in the show notes. But the, the first thing you want to do is always have a, a phone call. You know, is there even a real number on the website? You know, is there is there a real number on there's a real number on 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 Brecken, right? On your Brecken website? Oh, there better I, be. Then no, I, I know. I think I know there is. I mean, it's got to be um, at the bottom or it's or it's under a contact. Go to, we just launched a new website last week. Yeah, it looks really good. I saw that. Oh, oh by the way, you put you. Uh, uh, there well, I did. I put a review from you. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, but you put you put my last name was uh, with an E instead of an M. Not that it matters. Um, oh, well, then that's I got to go back to our website, guys. Hey, hey we're getting <laughs> off track here. And, and, and <laughs> you you have told me something even already here. Call my uh, website. I mean, which you can find my contact info all over the Internet. But it um, it doesn't have our, our phone number there at the, at the footer. Huh? We need that. Hey, I'm sorry. We're getting off track here. This is what you're doing here is really good, but no, we don't have our phone number there at the footer. Yes, there yeah. is at least a hundred phone numbers probably on various. Those, those are called trust statements. You should actually have a couple different numbers. And then side note, if you are raising capital, one of the best websites to file file to follow is site tuners. See, you notice he has a phone number up here. Mm -hmm. There's lots of there there in marketing. It's, it's called, uh, there are examples of trust. You know, you have the referrals in here. Um, we're jumping off topic, but just know if you want to look, if you're building a money raising website, go to site tuners and you can actually reach out to them and get a free, free contact. They can help you optimize your website. Oh, that's I cool. Have, yeah. And we can talk about that later. So break in and then back to decision-making processes. So you want to have a phone call with them and, and you want to look at their track record and not just look at what they are projecting, but what were their actual returns? And referrals is really important. Um, a lot of times I'm working with physicians. They only want to talk to another physician that invested with us. Mm. So if you're if you're raising money, again, not just if you're an investor, but if you're raising money, make sure that you have the different occupations of your investors separated and tagged because you're going to have different investors that are going to want to speak and receive information in a unique way that they're probably going to hear it better from someone that has the same job as you. So just a side note. Um, but but when you're asking for referrals, maybe ask for somebody that it has the same job as you because they're, they're going to care probably about the same things as you as an investor. The strategy. So different types of strategy. Um, right now, I'm, I'm not so bullish on multifamily. I'm more so bullish on alternative assets. I think multifamily is going to be, uh, I think there's going to be a correction. And I'm, I'm interested in looking at multifamily in a couple of years from now, unless there's a super sweet deal. Um, because, but the point is, I know my strategy right now, and I've moved a little bit away towards multifamily. I'm in alternative assets. I'm in storage. I'm in uh, industrial with some with some really good sponsors. And then think about this. You know, they always say that your closest five friends are going to predict uh, are are kind of like a uh, a microclimate of what you're going to become. You know, if you have five Fred five friends that are way out of shape. And you're probably going to become out of shape, right? right. Um, so the partners. So understanding who your sponsor has partnered with, why, and then learning about those partners. Are those partners ethical? Like mm -hmm. what have those partners done? And and then also asking your sponsor why they partnered with that particular sponsor, because that could show, that could be, um, you know, you're peeling the onion back and learning about why the sponsor partner with somebody else because that could show where the sponsor feels like they might not be super strong or might not have enough resources and time is a resource. And so learning about your sponsor's partners is really important. And then, so that's the, that's the first quadrant or not quadrant. That's the first step in, in this decision, this decision-making process. And again, decision quality equals your life quality. You, you, your decisions in every area, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So now we're going to dive into the MSA and um, there's my old partner, uh, Neil Bawa had this thing called location magic. I can send you the link for it. It's really good on identifying key KPIs and submarket KPIs. So for example, I want to look at the population growth, the, the job growth, and I want to look at the crime and, and, and uh, the average condo value. I want to look at the average, the average income growth and there's certain metrics and you can reach out to me. I can give you those metrics that are my lowest um, growth requirements for, for a Metro. And then I want to look at the neighborhood. I want to look at the, 
the poverty levels. I want to look at the crime levels. I want to look at the income levels. I want to look at the rent levels for that neighborhood. Um, and again, job growth. You can even sometimes look at job growth. And Neighborhood Scout, USAData.io, there's a, a lot of really good websites that are out there that can give you uh, KPI metrics. Actually, uh, I can pull up. So here's here's a couple different fee-based softwares that will help you with identifying market and sub-market information. So we have REI Indicator, Neighborhood Scout, Reonomy. Reonomy is really good for the debt. Um, so that's probably if you're raising capital, trying to buy buildings or, or buy assets, it's really good for because you'll know the timing of when people have to sell or when they have to get new new financing. Bestplaces.net, Best Map. Those are some free ones. DataUSA.io, Google Search, CrimeGrade.org, City Data, Department of Numbers. Those are some free ways to look at submarkets. And actually, I'm gonna I want to show you one thing for schools when you're when you're investing in B and C classes, or when you're investing in A and A and B classes, the schools are more important. Important. If you're investing in a a, a C class. Crime is more important to a tenant. Just, just understand that. But if you want to find out where to get more information on good schools, niche.com, greatschools.org, justicemap.org. Those are a couple of really good resources for finding out good schools. Um, again, go back to the, you know, a couple minutes back in this YouTube video, and you can see those, those free and fee services. Uh, laws and risks, obviously rent control, understanding if it's even impacting or not. Where I live right now, we have rent control, but it's CPI plus 8%. And CPI is like 8%. So I can raise my rent 16% every year. You know, that's, it's okay. Yeah, Northern California has rent control, but is it even, you know, that's that, that's pretty high bump right. every year. Um, municipality. So this has to do with, with understanding different laws. There are some really good websites for understanding the amount of permits and developments that are coming in your area. That's really important because if you have a development that's huge, 200, 300, 400 units that are going in across the street and uh, you're going to probably have to give up a couple months of free rent, that's going to kill your cash flow for the first year. Um, so that's something to think about. Unit count, square feet. Just know that, that um, in times of recession, people like more bedrooms and more bathrooms. People huddle together when money's tight. And so just having more bedrooms and bathrooms are, they're, they're more desirable in a time of recession, but at the same time, uh, they'll, they'll probably stay there longer because they're going to have more, more crap there. Um, and then understanding that people will typically choose a bigger square foot uh, facility than, than a small, or a bigger square foot um, apartment than a smaller square foot apartment. Um, and then just understanding what's your asset class and what's the strategy behind that asset class. For that investment and we're going through here quick again we could always talk i got five more minutes right yep okay so um this third level is the investment and you can read this we can you can pause the video but we're going to start with tax benefits there's three types of investors there's there's growth investors there's cash flow investors and then there's tax deferment investors and so just understanding why are you investing in this particular thing you know an atm investment and a multifamily investment and a new development investment are all going to have different. They're going to have different types of uh, depreciation benefits. Right. Um, you know, typically, if, if you have more than three million dollars deployed, you're a cash flow in, cash flow investor. And then if you have less than that, you're an equity growth investor. That's just kind of what I noticed um, from dealing with with. I've probably had six thousand investor calls. Uh, the NOI strategy. So what's the strategy that they're doing to implement to increase the net operating income? What's the lending info? This is crushing people right now. There's $1.5 trillion of debt that's about to come up at the end of their term. What are those people going to do um, if if the income or the, the worth of the, the property is actually less than, than um, what it needs to be in order for them to, to get new debt? You know, maybe if their DSCR is, is 1.0, they're not going to be able to get new debt, so they might have to sell. So just knowing what your lending info is, what your LTV, LTC, your when's the interest only term, and and how that affects your your bump in your uh, your balloon payment, not your balloon payment, but how it affects the the increase of the of the mortgage on a monthly level um, when you're no longer interest only, if that's 
what the the structure is and understanding the distribution schedule. I don't personally care if I get one check a quarter or one check a month. I have so many different investments. I don't even look. Um, I mean, I look at all the reports, but to me, I'm going to get the money eventually. I, I partner with people again, the, the number one thing I do is I check the sponsor. I partner with people I really trust, people that have a great track record. So the distribution schedule, if it's monthly, quarterly, weekly, you know, with with some of this new um, bit tokenization of, of real estate, you can actually have daily distributions. But I don't know if that is even something that's attractive to somebody. And then uh, formsd.com filing, just making sure that, you know, it's a real entity that you're sending your money to. But you probably already knew that because you you vetted the sponsor. And then the last, the last, we have two minutes for the last section, which is the deal numbers. Understanding the capex, the reserves, and the, and the operational budgets that's really important. And and sometimes the the capex or the reserves are huge. And you go, why do we have five million dollars of reserves? And they say, well, we're raising dis distribution reserves. It's like, wait, you're raising money just to give me back my own money? What the heck is that? You know. But that's a that's a project that I came across uh, about a year ago. It's kind of funny. Um, understanding the fees. You know, sometimes the fees are steep, sometimes they're not. But the truth is, you you think that, you, you know, you need to pay some sort of fees. You want to pay for someone to have uh, some resources to actually implement good asset management. So asset management fees and property management fees, you get what you pay for a lot of times. It's like it's like olive oil. If you If you buy a cheap bottle of olive oil, it's probably fake. But if you buy an expensive bottle of olive oil, it's more likely going to be real than fake. It could still be fake. So the same thing applies with with uh, the fees that have to do with asset management. Really important. You think you think that you know you think it's expensive working with a professional? Try working with an amateur. Like you get what you pay for. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah. Ask for the underwriting. I love it. If they don't want to share the underwriting with you, that's a huge red flag. And you don't need you don't need the the actual model. You don't want the model because you might get an Excel version that doesn't line up with the version that you have and it opens up and all the numbers are are like they're gone, they're off. Right. You just ask for a PDF screenshot of the underwriting. And if you want further information, you should be able to have a phone call with their investor relations person like myself or you know the the partner like Sam and they should be able to speak eloquently through the entire numbers with you. That, Ask for the that, underwriting. That's one thing. And we have to we have to hit stop here, unfortunately. But you this is awesome, by the way. Yeah. Colm, what you've yeah. shared today is really good because this applies both to the people out there raising capital and also to the people out there looking to deploy their money into investments. The strategy is the same. It's just on which side of the table you are and how you're looking at this. One comment on the underwriting is I actually asked for the Excel model. Uh, and so maybe I'm a little bit different in that regard, but I asked for the Excel model just so I can play with the numbers and see how they change. Or it's like, okay, oh, well, that's, good call that's, out. Like that's your assumption. Like you assume there's an 8% rent growth, but what happens if there's a negative 3% rent growth? Like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know. That's just one of the strategies that I, as a personal, when I deploy capital into, into uh, other investments as a limited partner that I 100% of the time ask for the yeah. Excel model. Anyway, on that, uh, Colm, if our listeners want to get in touch with you, learn more about you, what's the best way to do that? My email is colm at tgaip.com. That's, that's colm at tgaip.com. And, um, and there'll be some show notes. Absolutely. Colm, this is great, dude. I, I, maybe we got to come back for round three, but thank you Heck again yeah. for your time today. This has been absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, thanks, Sam. Hey, thanks for listening to the How to Scale Commercial Real Estate Podcast. If you can do me a favor and subscribe and leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, whatever platform it is you use to listen, if you can do that for us, that would be a fantastic help to the show. It helps us both attract new listeners as well as rank higher on those directories. So appreciate you listening. Thanks so much and hope to catch you on the next episode.